Chinese bug, uh, Saturday uh, evening uh, to Jimmy's program, where it's now broadcast, broadcast out of uh, live uh, here this dot at. It's, it's an internet thing because it's a normal thing. Because a uh, BAI or Pacifica, whatever they did, what they did, and it's some unprincipled thing. And Jimmy was one of the, one of my radio children. Uh, and so, and my other radio children, Craig and they both, and Jay Smooth, all left the station out of this unprincipled thing that Pacifica did. And so they're all doing other things. I'll find out what the rest of them are doing. Um, oh, that reminds me. Let me tell you a little, the last bit of a creative, of the whole thing. Pull this over here. Before I get that, I know you're wondering. You were saying no more radio. Put that right there for a second. Oh. You say, what's this big joke you have here? See, it's a smoothie, right? And uh, they have, you know, they have uh, they have almond milk, goat milk. All these days they have almond milk, goat milk. No, I'm not goat milk, I got goat milk. Almond uh, stuff, uh, they got oat uh, milk. They got, uh, I don't know, they got coconut milk, whatever have you. But I grew up, um, at least for a little bit, on because uh, you had cow milk, but they had to put me on goat's milk because I was really lactose intolerant, I guess, you know, I don't know. But they have ghost milk down here, so when I saw it, what I did is I just started, I just pimped my up instead of using the opener, whatever have you. I said, let me go back to my childhood since I'm in you know, my sister's home and she has all the stuff from my grandma. We even got the pots that we grew up with. I mean, you know, like the, like the pancake uh, platter that we made pancakes on. It's like some kind of steel out of it. Really, stuff still goes. So anyway, so I pimped this up a little bit. I put it, put it already. I'm just demonstrating. See, ghost milk. Yes. Revisiting. It's not even my childhood, my toddlerhood. <laughs> because I really didn't, I didn't drink milk when I was a kid. But I put chocolate in it, so I did that. But, you know. And then the farmer's market, when they, not the farmer's market, they had that uh, Union Square market when it first started. They had the farmers come in with, like, real, you know, like, real milk or whatever have you. So, I mean, the chocolate milk stuff ran right through me. So I know I'm at lactose intolerant. So anyway. So that's my smoothie from yesterday. I just pimped it up a little bit more. You know, this is the one that had the one that had a little bit of whatever. I told you yesterday what it was. I'll name up and I won't put the link there. And uh, so I'm gonna put this thing over it, even though that it's too busy to too messy to have the other thing. So here's my smoothie from yesterday, but pimped up a little bit more with some more ghost milk. Someone has um, cherries, you know, real big cherries in it. No, I forgot what I had yesterday. Oh, uh, 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 stuff in it. Um, uh, cucumber, uh, a little bit of maple syrup, uh, whatever it means. Oh, kale. There's kale in it. Mm. So good. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I'm wasting time. Oh, this is the last bit I want to talk, talk about. Um, when I did No More Radio, oh, man. Gotta start over. Wait, wait, Joe, gotta wait. I got, where's my, where's my note set? This was, hey, yeah, wait. I think it's out there. Wait, wait, stay there. Don't go any place. Still there? Okay. Oh. Take notes. Oh boy, boy, boy. Oh, I've been taking, I've been reading uh, this, that book. Let me remember, oh, here we go. I've been reading this book real slow. This is the book uh, on a friendship between uh, uh, Joe Lewis and Jesse Owens. We have to, I'm reading it real slow, real slow, because it's so good. So I'm making some notes. Um, do you realize that they called 
the, the, the Nazi press, let's put it that way, not gonna, it's really interesting because the people, well, just, they're, they're into sports, so they're, they're cheering you, Jazzy, Jazzy, that kind of, you know, like that. Hitler and the, and the staff, they were on another trip. But the press was really trying to, you know, that the American press versus the, versus the Nazi press, if you will. Um, what did not, uh, socialists, whatever, the, 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 whatever they were called, right? Um, but anyway, there was one thing that struck me. One of the, the German press were becoming increasingly embittered towards the, quote, black auxiliary tribes, end quote. And of course, there's some Jewish people on the team, some black people on the team, I guess, whatever, but they were talking about those two people. And they were, they were um, in fact, an aide to the uh, to the foreign minister uh, went up to the some, some the daughter of some dignitary and said um, that the U.S. was relying on non-humans like just like Owens and other Negroes. Oh, on non-humans like other like Owens and other Negroes and, and other Negro athletes. Interesting. Auxiliary water tribes. Hey, were the Nazis precise? Question? Just a question. I'm just reading from the book. Okay. I want to talk about normal radio for just a second. <laughs> I built normal radio starting. I think the first unofficial thing when I got the thing, I did a, um, Schomburg had an exhibit on Marcus Garvey. So I just hold like two, two and a half hours or three hours on Marcus Garvey. And then uh, quite, quite interesting. No, very, very good. I'll leave that alone. But in the heyday of normal radio, oh, here we go. I was trying to remember, you know what I mean? I've got to get this straight. But in the heyday of normal radio, I had about like one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. At least fourteen people were involved in normal radio. It came on every Wednesday. That's interesting because I just read the other thing. When I did variations in blackness, my college station, the radio program came on Wednesday evenings from seven oh five to nine thirty. When I did normal radio, they came on from nine to twelve. Oh, was it first nine to twelve? No, it was in the afternoon. Anyway, it came on for like on a Wednesday. Interesting. I read that thing to you before. Anyway, here's the pictures I found. Uh, this is me behind the board right there. See, see the uh, no the apartheid anti-apartheid T-shirt there. I hope you can see that. If you can't, oh well, because I'm not taking it out. This things here. Oh, right here. This is Lucia Sierra. Lucia. Um, um, she came. She came to me. That's what trained in radio. But she was a film student. At, I think NYU, wherever she was a film student at. So I, well, I'll tell you what her position was, but that's Lucia. Uh, uh, that was very strange. Uh, but Lucia had a, we had an interest, we would go to movies together, stuff like that. People would think that we were an item. But let me tell you something about me. If you see me with some women, with a woman, you know, sometimes I'm gonna, sometimes I'm not. So me and Lucia had a really good relationship. Kind of interesting because the thing they had with Sinead and Brian, when when we did normal, uh, when we did our variations in blackness, we were always together. But we were an item. We, she was like my confidant, you know. Anyway, so Lucia, one time I think Lucia's, um, she Puerto Rican or Dominican? I get confused. I think she was more Dominican. Anyways, one time after a long time, I went to her house. So she invited me to her. You know, to her, you know, to to her family, to her family, you know, and they were having dinner or something like that. Invite me to dinner. Very interesting. Now, Lucia was, uh, well, let's, I guess you call her progressive, you know, but with us, she was just Lucia, and we all treat each other, blah, blah, blah. But when I went to her house, it was amazing to me. I was shocked, you know what I mean? Because she was, had to serve the, the, people, the, the men, and whatever have you. It was like a subservient role, you know, the men were all, uh, the women, it was like, it, I never sort of, I don't know why, I just never was in that kind of, I don't know what happened, you know what I mean? And now even in, 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 in Africa, the same thing, you know, the women served the men. Ah, that's right, let's leave that alone. That's, this is, uh, right here, it's pretty, you can see it, this is the, um, the comic strip, that club that was in New York, because what happens, Creative Unity was so successful, that one time we did a live show there, on how we did it. But Leah, Lucia and I were MCs for that show. Oh, and here's, this is a picture of me, that's the headband I have on, oh yeah. But my first headphones, I love these headphones, they're Sennheiser. With the things that, that doesn't matter. That's right down there. Um, 
Oh, here on this side. This is a. Oh yes, this is a. This is me. That did, but this is an incredible person, incredible human being, Luce, Lucia, uh, Sophia Henderson Holmes, right? And uh, this picture down here. This is a picture of. Uh, Oh, I guess Eugene must have had a picture of Eugene. Uh, uh, what's that? Margaret Walker Alexander. That was a bunch of people from, from his uh, Illinois kind of contingent, St. Louis or whatever kind of contingent. That's me and, and Eugene Whitman there. And I have on this T-shirt I've been trying to find. Not, not trying to T-shirt, but there was a meaning. And the T-shirt, it said, it's, I think it said Ojirofuro. It was an art thing. And it was from South Africa, interestingly enough. I've had a South African relationship for a very long time. The first essay I ever wrote was, um, what essay, I mean, a school report is in grade school, something like that. I wrote a thing on on on, 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 on gliders, but it was something about Namibia, what well, was South, Southwest Africa at the time. Hmm. And what well, we get to that, if I, get, if I find a play, when I get to St. Louis, I find a play, a, thing, a play called The Pig's Death. It was about, again, Southern Africa. Oh, so there's me behind the board. Now you can, who are these two fine people down there? That's Sophia Hendon Holmes, Kirk Lemkin Jr., the two poets in residence for a, a No More Radio. Right, let's see what else is here. Uh, again, the, oh, this is Gwendolyn Brooks, my sister. This is Gwendolyn Brooks here. Gwendolyn Brooks down here, but that's, that's, that's Eugene sent me these pictures, but that's Sophia right there. I should do this. Uh, once in a while, when Eugene was in town, he would come by the program. Of course, I had a poetry, you know, bent in my program. So here's a. So here's a, me, Kurt, uh, Sophia, and uh, and uh, what's his name? And Eugene. They went. They, you know, we had a poetry when they came back to, by the station. That's uh, Eugene and Sophia Henson Holmes out there. Well, let's just get us the same picture, right? Like that. And then, uh, oh, hey. Ah, this, I'll do a separate program on this. This is, I got the picture here too. See this picture? I used to do these print specials. And these two guys here, we call them CT3, that's uh, uh, Clifford Taylor the third, And uh, this is Dion. Dion wrote me a thing. I'll do that another time. Anyway, Dion wrote me a thing. And this up here is Baby D. And that's me right there. We are basically doing a Prince kind of, uh, Time of the Times kind of thing. Like, uh, this picture here is another take on that, that same session. It was a photo session. Let's see, it says Baby D of Baby D and the Boys. We did this video. Oh, man. I wonder if Amadea and, and, and Bahati still have that. Bah Bahati's best. Well, um, there's a, uh, a cinematographer, a cameraman for sports on, I think, ABC or something like that. His wife is Amadea Best. She was in the, she was the, the play, the, the final play I did before I left, which is Glorious Monster Bell at Home, but that's neither here nor there. I'll talk about that some other time. Anyway, so they, we did a video. A video, we did a, a video. I don't care, like a foremost art video. And so Baby D and the boys, it was Baby D, and then all the crazy, it was a wild, and even Kara was in it. It was just a wild kind of show. I wish I could get that. Thing. That thing was classic. Anyway, so there's a, a thing right there, right there. So Baby D and the boys. Oh, Baby D and the one. She's on the ladder, right? And then of course you have CT3 seated in the white cap. Dion. We call him just Dion. In the background, and, uh, and my name for the thing was T. That's when I first you start using T on the show. Okay. And it, the picture is a la Sign of the Times LP cover, and the photograph is by uh, Michael Mayburn. Remember to tell you Michael Mayburn. His father is a. Uh, his father is Harold Mayburn, uh, the famous jazz musician. In fact, we did like when we when they had him create Crazy the Collective, uh, the theme, the end song. Uh, 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 Michael's father Harold plays an upright piano. It's really a great ending. Have you seen that? Uh, I'm, I'm skipping around because I'm trying to get through this. Because this is supposed to be about no more. Oh, I can stay there. This is supposed to be about no more radio. On the heyday of no more radio. What's name there? I had, oh, I'm missing somebody here. Okay, no more radio. In the heyday of no more radio, I had these two young people record in the, in the uh, I guess it was edit C, so they were on tape. Every other, rest of the program was live, but every week they recorded, come, and they were in school, they were at City College. And, uh, and they were in school, so they couldn't come up whenever the no more radio was happening, so I record them, uh, you know, 
some days before. So that was Sister Selma and Brother Reggie. They would do the Mayat. They would open up with Mayat. Always had that two you know, male female energy. I tried to always have that. And that, this was before political correctness, but I don't have it. They just, I don't know, just, that's, that's what I do. Uh, Brenda Black and Harold Lucius were, my, were the interns, right? That's four. And I had a news crew that every, and, you know, every, um, you know, it was like say a month. So they, we rotate with four people. So every, um, you know, every week we a different news person, you know, like that. And then they would repeat, you know what I'm talking about, it's a rotation. They were Ron McGee, my man, Ron McGee, peace and blessings. Sure. Paul DiRienzo, you all know Paul DiRienzo as a, anyway, he was great at that. He was in the news department. These are all people in the news department, working with news. Paul, Paul in fact, we did a thing one time. Uh, like, there was a, a thing, I think, I think it was cot. They made this law that you couldn't be, do something in the park, you couldn't lay down on a bench, something like that. So he came to do this report, you know, like that. So later on, the show, I said, come on, Paul, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're gonna uh, dramatize it, you know. So we had this. So we had somebody like they laid on the parkway, and Paul came out like a cop. Yeah, hey, got, got, got to move, got to move, by the It was great, you know. So you had the news, right? And then later on in the program, we dramatized that 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 segment. It was interesting. Kai Crooks, uh, a sister, and you now she was one of the news people. And uh, Peter J. Billingsley, I think it was Peter. He, a, a guy. Um, he was an activist like down Lower East Side. Well, he, do these, he did these tours down Lower East Side. He was, for, he was, he was more like a, like a, you know, a, a real, uh, what do you call it, leftist, but you know, real union kind of, you know, die hard down in the street kind of cat. You know, but I should say these race of these people. Um, Ron McGee was black. And everybody was black except for Paul Durian was a white guy. Uh, Pil Peter was a was a was a white guy. Uh, also, I have to include my main man in here, um, who, uh, where's my pen? Uh, that I have included here, and um, that would um, be Chris Brand. Chris would come by every month, we'd do a segment, a poetry segment, and take the segment and send it down to Bluefields, Nicaragua. So it was like our sister, because somehow we, the Lower East Side had a sister city project with, with Bluefields, Nicaragua. Well, that's where the black people are in Nicaragua, it's on the coast. You know? Caribbean coast. Anyway, so um, so we send so so Chris would we, we would take it and Chris would be responsible for sending it down there. Uh, I don't have listed there. It's my pen. Come on, I don't remember it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here we go. Here's the heavies. Oh, I told you, uh, Sophia Henderson Holmes and Kurt Lampkin Jr. were the poets in residence. They would come by every once in a while. They come by. Like I said, I had a, a large poetry bent. Uh, I forget, but we had a, I had somebody doing commentary. I had a sister doing commentary. I don't think I had a brother doing. I had a sister doing commentary. Lucia said I would come in once once in a while to do a film review. Uh, and here we go. Every once in a while, uh, uh, Dr. John E. Moore, John John Moore, Dr. John Moore, the, the, the Hobart herbologist. Okay, you, you all know. Um, okay, you all know. Uh, oh man, Dr. Savy, right? But before Dr. Savoy, as in the eighties, Dr. Savy came into the eighties, but John Moore was 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 he was the cat. He was the cat man. Hunt Twenty Fifth Street, blah blah blah. Hall, you know, if you were old enough, you knew uh, Dr. Moore. If I got two classes with him. Do I have that thing? Hold on a second. I know you don't believe, but I studied. He came to the show every once in a while. But let's see what's here. I think it's here. What's this for? You know? oh, oh, that's somebody. Oh, that's, that's Melody. Oh, Melody. Okay, I'm talking about Melody some other time. I saw this thing somewhere. Uh, sugar Cane and Woo. We're talking about Sugar Cane Alley another time. But that's the movie that I just cried. I'm going to go through this book some other time. I'm trying to look for this thing. I know if Dr. Moore has. I took this. Uh, oh, here we go. October 18, 1987, this is a receipt, $100, Anthony Sloan, Surviving Herbology, $100, maybe it was a book, oh, I know, he would print out these things, so this must be $100 I paid, the final hookup call, but you see, Dr. John E. Moore, right there, for something, I don't know what that means, but this is a receipt, because I bought his tract or whatever it was, you know, but I studied food, I was with Dr. For almost, almost two years, I would go to his classes in Harlem, right? And he would come to my, well, he would, first he would program, then he would come to my classes, hardly pick up his, 
Baby D and the boys. Oh, just a text. Uh. And so Dr. Lord, peace and blessings on Father's eternal soul. He actually was a, he learned all the stuff with Hobo traveling around. Um, he was great. And not last, not least, Professor James Small. I have a picture of James. There's a picture of James around here someplace. Well, you've seen James before. I showed, I showed you a picture of him before. I can't find him right now. Doctor. I bet you're using this book here. Ah. I bet you see it someplace. Nah, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Ha 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 ha. Ah. This is James Small right here. I, this is Dr. John Henry Clark right there. But this is James lecturing or something like that. But James, amazing. Amazing. You know, I had the whole crew around um, the First World Alliance to hang out. Out of all those people, you know, you, James is my cat, you know what I mean? So I've been there. He used to come by normal radio all the time. We used to do this thing. It was so funny. It was just funny. I would do this to Dr. Moore, too. And with Dr. Moore, something else I was saying. You know, Dr. Moore asked him a question, and then he would go off. I would just leave, you know, just to, to places monitored. I could go away, but he would be lecturing this for 15 minutes. I would go hang out for... <laughs> It's very funny. You say, well, Dr. Moore, tell me about, it's my favorite song I can say, but tell me about, uh, I heard this, uh, Paca Diacra. He said, Paca Diacra. It's an herb from Skyana, South America. Blah, blah, blah. He'd go off, man. He'd just keep on going. All right, so I can leave the name. But James, we have to say, I, like James would say something like, blah, blah. I said, James, you know, they're going to say this kind of racist. That's like reverse racism, something like that. He said, I'm only saying what I got this from a white man, from a white man's book. Writing a book from a white man. You all believe in a white man, don't you? It was hilarious. So anyway, that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, at least 15 people. Not to mention every once in a while create some element of creative unity would come by. So at least 15 core members, including the ones, I'll be 16, of that, 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 were, that ran with basically no more radio. Amazing. But that's the way it roll. I don't be doing it. I don't be doing, you know, yeah, I can do a program by myself. Well, I did no more, no more radio when I, in the, in the uh, late night, I would do it by myself. But in the afternoon, it was an incredible thing. Incredible thing. So that was no more radio. I just wanted to tell you about no more radio. Oh, let me hold a flag up high. It's no more radio flag. My, my wife, South Africa, just sold this for me. Right? And of course, there's a, normal radio you can probably see it like that so anyway, anyway so that's my famous program oh also one more time we had the comedy club with the crazy Andy, but we also did a morning program one time amazing i don't know they would never let me do a morning program but we do i had a whole a whole crew in there including a cat that did sound effects we had lucia doing doing a film review uh andrea lucas came in to do the weather uh, she would say the weather and then she'd go to some so, uh, you know, say, what do you call that? Um, Shakespeare quote. They said, no, no, the weather. Not, <laughs> uh, 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 anyway, that's on some other time. I'll try to get that done. Okay, I'm, I know I'm babbling, but I gotta, I'm got i rushing. Why am I rushing? I don't know. Because sometimes I do rush. I being me. T from the Patterson taking the train to bed, letting you know what I only suspect from ADES of the ADOS, which is, which normal radio is thoroughly in the, in the, in the lineage of ADOS which is right now the uh, American descendants of chattel slavery.